to start today with a story. And I wanted to tell you a story about something that my daughter did when she was younger. Okay. She found a kitten. And she wanted to keep it. Keep it, keep it, keep it. All right. So she brought the kitten to me, and she stood in front of me, and she gave me these pleading eyes. And she held the kitten, and she petted the kitten, and she said, isn't this kitten so cute? Its fur is so soft. Its nose is so warm. Can I keep this kitten? And I was like, no. We're not having a cat mouse. Oh, but mom, I found it. It was shivering in the cold. Someone had dropped it off. It is so starving. And it was meowing so pitifully. I just couldn't leave it on the street. And I'm like, no. Oh, but mom, hold it. Look at its whiskers. Look at the pretty color. Look at the tail. Okay, she kept trying to get me to say yes to keeping this cat. And she kept choosing very, very precise words to convince me to keep this cat. She was describing how cute it was and how cuddly. And then she described that it was shivering and meowing in a pitiful way. Okay. She was trying to persuade me to change my mind and allow her to have a cat, okay? Uh, today I want to teach you that. Essayists do that too. Writers do that. Writers choose very precise words in order to get their readers thinking and feeling in different ways. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. Take a look at your zoo's text set. And remember last week we looked at this and we were noticing and we were hashtagging because we were trying to collect details. But today we're going to read this with a different purpose in mind, with a different lens. And I want to read this now with a lens for looking at words that will get you to think and feel in different ways. Okay, let me start with the quote at the top of this zucosis, which is, in, which is source one. It was the sadness in their eyes that has continued to haunt us. Look at those two words, sadness, go ahead and underline that, and haunt. Sadness in their eyes and haunting you, okay? They get you to start feeling as a reader in a certain way. You kind of get the impression that this is not going to be good for the animals. Right? And they chose those words sadness and haunt on purpose to get you thinking and feeling in certain ways. All right, listen while I continue to read and give me a thumbs up if you hear or see another word that is getting you to feel in a certain way. Keep animals in zoos? We don't think so. There is documented research that many animals removed from their natural habitat and kept in captivity have developed a kind of mental illness known as zoocosis. Animals with this disease often pace back and forth, twist their necks, bob their heads up and down, turn in never-ending circles, and even tear holes in their own skin. Can you imagine being so miserable? Ooh. All right, let me just finish the sentence. Can you imagine being so miserable that you want to inflict harm on yourself? I think, Sawyer, yours went up first. What word did you notice? Miserable. Miserable. Go ahead and underline that word. Miserable. And how is that getting you to think or feel? Um, it makes you really sad. You kind of still feel that sadness, right, that we heard before? Okay, did anybody else see another word in that sentence, Grady? Harm. Harm. Okay, Carter? Inflict. Inflict. Okay, so those are precise words that the author chose in order to get you, the reader, to think and feel in certain ways. All right, let's keep going and see if we can find more. Once, when we visited a zoo, we noticed that some of the animals kept in cages were grabbing onto the bars and shaking them. If you could have looked into these animals' eyes like we did, you would have seen a deep sadness. Okay, we already talked about that. This is the quote that we got at the beginning. It is this sadness that continues to haunt us to this day. 
It has been documented that Junior Killer Whale was removed from his natural habitat in Iceland and placed in a tank in Niagara Falls. He died four years late, four years later, deprived of okay, Sophia, what word? Um, deprived. That's a really strong word when you deprive somebody. Anybody know what that means? Deprived. No, but I can see where you're thinking that because it begins with the same kind of a beginning. Aiden? To keep away from certain things. Okay, to keep them away. Well, that would have happened, yes. It's like a privilege that's taken away from you. Right, if you're deprived of it, uh, Carson, it might not necessarily mean that they ran out of it. It's like they just didn't give it to him. Okay, I don't think they did it on purpose, but uh, they didn't give it to him. All right, so that's another word. Okay, Junior is not alone. There are many aquatic animals that are taken from their natural habitats and placed in water tanks and aquariums around the world. These animals are separated from their families and are forced to live in groups that are nothing like their own families. Did anybody see something? Forced. forced is kind of a strong word, isn't it? Okay, it means when you're forced, you don't get a choice, right? All right, forced to live in in. in Forced to live in confined air spaces. Do you think they can get this type of exercise in tank waters? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in the wrong place. Forced to live in groups that are nothing like their own families. As though that isn't enough, animals like whales and dolphins, who are accustomed to swimming up to 100 miles in one day and diving hundreds of feet, are forced to live in confined spaces. Do you think they can get this type of exercise in a water tank? We don't think so. Carson? Confined. Say it again. Confined. Confined. Okay, confined. That's a very strong word. Okay, when you're confined, sometimes they refer to that like being confined to prison. I'm confined to my bedroom because I'm um, I'm going to be on um, some kind of a punishment. All right, I'm grounded. I'm in my bedroom. I'm deprived of all of my electronics. Okay. Part uh, maybe tight. Say it again. Tight. Like T I P E. Okay. It, was that a word that you heard? Oh, I see. In the type of exercise? I'm not sure. I would say that it just depends on how it's going to be used. Okay? Wait. There's more. Aquatic animals have a special way of talking to one another and finding their prey. They use sound patterns or echo lo echolocation. This natural process is sometimes non-existent in aquariums because of the noise level and the glass enclosures. This type of confinement is unacceptable for any animal anywhere. Okay, Grady, what did you hear? Okay. You want me to go back and reread that part? Oh, uh, non-existent in aquariums. Okay, all right. I'm not sure if that is really going to persuade, not persuade, but get somebody to think in a different way. Uh, but it's definitely a mature vocabulary word. A Adrian? Confinement. Okay, we talked about confinement already. A different one? Um, Mariah, I haven't heard from you. Unacceptable. 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 Okay, so we have seen for ourselves, another one you have? Echolocation. Well, that's, that's, the, that's a technical term. I definitely use that. That's a key. That's the description. Echolocation is the way that they hear each other. Echolocation, that's how it says, that's how they talk to each other and find their prey. It's called echolocation. So it is a big vocabulary word. Okay, I'd like you to look at the reference sheet that I gave you today, this morning. Okay, if you look on this side right here, Zachary, turn the paper over. Other side, there you go. Okay, on this side right here, uh, there are two separate charts which show you words that you can use when writing a persuasive essay that will help to get your readers to think and feel in different ways. And the one at the top are positive words. You can see the positive, like important, most, need, sure. Definitely, amazing, powerful, vital. And then the, the grouping at the bottom are the persuasive words that show for negative, 
consequences. Unacceptable. There's that word, unacceptable, that we found. Harmful, terrible, shameful. Okay, and I'm sure as you're using this chart, you're going to think of other words that you can use to help get people to think and feel in different ways. And I want you to feel free to add those words to the chart. Just keep in mind that the ones at the top are positive words, and the ones at the bottom are more negative words. So you want to, if you want people to agree with something and think it's, it's the right thing to do, then you're going to choose a word from the top chart. And if you want them to disagree or think something is bad, then you want to choose from the bottom chart. So today, when you go back to your seats for your work time, what you're going to do is you are going to continue to work on your essay. A lot of you are ready to start writing. Use your checklist. And when you get to your body paragraphs, look for ways that you can use the words on our chart to get your readers to think and feel in different ways. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, then go ahead and make your way back to your seats and begin working. Make sure you take your materials from the floor. 